Hello, everyone. I'm happy to be able to present some of our research data management activities at Graz University of Technology. Um, by the name of Cybers Austria. Cybers Austria is an interactive web based analytical platform that allows simultaneous access and analysis of research data. This webinar will be given by me. My name is Claire John Cartier and my colleague Hermann Schranzhofer. This webinar is, in, is part of the event series Research Data Management in Austria. This event series is aimed at researchers and research support staff and serves to promote networking and exchange on the topic of research data management, writing data management plan and similar related topics. Slides and the recordings will be soon available via their homepage given, uh, yeah, you, you all know it, Forschungsdaten.at. And uh, for, for us, the presenters, we are part of the RDM team. This is an abbreviation standing for research data management at the local University of, Gra uh, of Technology at Graz. Um, my, me, myself, um, I'm part of the RDM team since, let's say, a year. I have been involved uh, in, in biomedical research and uh, also uh, in, in quali quality management uh, activities and all these experiences demonstrated uh, the challenge for open science and the necessity of research data management. So maybe my colleague wants to tell something about himself. Thank you, Claire. So my name is Hermann Schranzhofer. I'm data steward on our university since one and a half year. Before, I did a lot of research in the area of thermal engineering, uh, at least 15 years, and had a lot of uh, things to do with simulations and measurements. So I uh, generated a lot of data, and that's uh, why I have a big background about data management in research projects. And that's why I'm changed to the topic of data management, and I'm now uh, supporting the researchers on our university in different topics of research data management. Thank you, Claire. Well, and today uh, we will uh, talk. We will talk about cybers and give you a background presentation first. Then you will see a demonstration, and afterwards we will have the session of question and answers. So, to begin with, a short introduction from a historic point of view. Uh, till the 1960s, uh, calculations were primarily done by, by paper and pencil, with some exceptions. And first, uh, personal computers have been introduced later in, 19, in the 70s. Um, some of them may be also known by, like Apple, Tandy, Commodore. All have all their operating systems were in, uh, were loaded by floppy disks, so they have been uh, substituted late later in the eighties uh, when the first hard disks came up, and also other companies arrived like uh, Atari, uh, Sinclair, uh, IBM, Texas Instruments also, and then in the nineties uh, it was the era of the beginning of the internet. Uh, and uh, sh uh, shared data. So uh, everyone knows uh, the name of, of Tim Berners-Lee, the inventor of the World Wide Web, uh, also the, the Hypertext Transfer Protocol or the, the World Wide Web consort consor Consortium. Uh, then, by then, it was the time that the domain name system has been introduced and the TCP IP protocol or program. The, later, Later uh, on, simulation and more data-driven sciences came up. Uh, it was parallel of the emergence of business intelligence, uh, si such as IBM and Oracle and SIS, so it's the originally named uh, statistical analysis systems. 
So there was an increased demand for data analysis software led to the rise of self-service business intelligence. And then this was also the start for the first platforms appearing for data sharing and data analysis. And also uh, CRM software and uh, predictive analytics. And by now, the, later than 2020, uh, we have CIT, this stands for Cybers Austria. From another point of view, also historically speaking, uh, we, we started uh, on a um, shared, uh, shared practice by using punch cards, which had to be carried to, to shared computers. When personal computers, uh, um, when, when personal And this behavior then changed again when complex analysis had to be calculated and uh, shared high performance computers had to be used. Around the 1970s, supercomputers had been developed and introduced by several universities. And later on, the, there was the enhancement of personal computers and the possibility for distributed calculations. This went back to local computation. And now, by 2020, uh, it's quite cur current actually data sharing and collaborative work via platform forms, forms uh, is the modern practice of data analysis. There are several data platforms available, uh, some of them quite known, like Google, uh, in, including Colab, of course, Drive and uh, um, Office Options, like Sheets, also known for Microsoft 365 with its cloud-based uh, data storage and uh, apps like Power BI, also for business intelligence. And others are as Nextcloud. This is a non proprietary um, example. Uh, SSS Via, this is a proprietary like Cohesity and also Mendeley Data Monitor. But there are several others. So, what is now the benefit of such environments? There's no installation necessary on local machines. They can be used via web browsers or command lines. The data can be accessed from everywhere. And uh, resources such as uh, high performance computing can be shared. And now, what is actually cybers? Cybers, uh, also called cyber infrastructure, has been introduced 2008 as a so-called iPlant by then. It was introduced uh, for the discipline of plant sciences. In the year of 2013, the project has been renewed and included for all new non-human life science research. It was later on renamed to Cybers in 2016 and the ongoing project phase, uh, which will, uh, which will hold on until the year of 2023, will focus on uh, integrating genomics, transcriptomics, uh, and aspects of geospatial analysis. So, Cybers was actually uh, built for managing the entire life cycle, from data creation to data publication. So these services include uh, the data management organization. This is also trans transferring data, the, uh, the underlying analysis and visualization, also metadata handling, data search discovery, it's sharing and towards uh, collaboration. And uh, of course, also a publication, the uh, final reuse of data.
Now, Cyrus is a cyber infrastructure. It offers a secure temporary data storage and interactive data analysis and high performance uh, computation resources. It's accessible via a web browser in the command line and integrates, uh, in, you can integrate your own resources. Well, it's also meant for education and training on how to use the cyber infrastructure to provide resources to work with real data at scale. There's also an, an GitHub re repository for streamlining the activities. And the main benefit is you can use it regardless of what operating system or setup you have at home without programming background, obviously. And Cyrus is based on, on software of IROTS used for organizing data. This allows also to collaborate uh, among institutions without the data without having to move the data to the cloud by using federated storage. And another aspect is reproducibility. By using containers, you can ensure the, the, to, share, to share executable code and data towards full replication. A more detailed view on, on, on this, this uh, computational infrastructure can be the arch architectural layout of hardware resources, uh, services, and products. As you can see, uh, cloud systems, high performance computers, database, and storage are included in the hardware resources, uh, which upon services can be offered as federated storage, uh, single sign on virtualization or container orchestration and job scheduling, but also the connection to other cyber infrastructure. And product, products uh, especially uh, offered by us is the discovery environment, but there are several others uh, available for Cyrus US. Ooh. Whenever you have the time, you can also have a look on that. So, Cybers Austria uh, the resulted in the platform we have uh, we can use today it was actually the name of the project started in 2018 led to the implementation of Cybers um, on, at Aust in Austria and uh, ended actually uh, last year this was the team behind uh, from, from No Center and Graz University of Technology, consisting of Stefanie Lindstedt, Manfred Stepponat, David Garcia, Sarah Striak, Konrad Lang, and Richard Hohensinner. Uh, this, this project aimed also uh, at connection, connecting institutions. This was based on the Biotech Med Consortium. This consortium consists of uh, the three universities uh, at Graz, the University of Technology, the Karl Franzens University and the Medical University at Graz. The idea was to connect uh, all of them while the main server uh, is, is uh, hosted by Graz University of Technology. So IWOTS has been installed, installed the discovery environment made accessible. Uh, also resources like uh, the underlying uh, VICE, the visual and interactive computing environment, uh, HD Condor for job scheduling and Docker for containerization have been implemented. Now, now uh, after this project phase, uh, we still aim to to expand and to enhance our system by connecting cybers to 
our repository at Graz University of Technology based on in Wien URDM. We also plan to connect Cybers to eLab FTW, which is an electronic lab notebook. And obviously we will, will integrate additional apps and try to connect with other data platforms. As an example for additional apps uh, left, you can see a screenshot of our system offering a couple of, of um, images for uh, um, integrated apps. And on the right side, you can see a screenshot from Cybers US, which starts only uh, the first part of the letter A in the alphabet and several other pages offering um, dozens of apps. But obviously, the service US is another uh, quantity of resources. So this is the team of uh, research data management uh, at Graz University of Technology, led by Elira saniva uh Regarding the de development of Cybers, we have the technical lead uh, by Mojib Vali. And this is already uh, the end of the, the background introduction. I can uh, mention upcoming events. Next week, there will be a, a webinar on innovative data environment hysteria, abbreviated ideas. This uh, is a project also um, mainly done by, by uh, universities at Graz and our team. And a week later, there will be another talk, another webinar. Tool. Okay, thank you, Leah, for your presentation. Uh, we heard now a lot about cybers, and my role here in the webinar is to show you a little bit cybers in action. And for this, I will show you my screen. Okay. So as Claire already explained, uh, the only thing you need is a web browser. So what we have to start is a web browser, of course. So that's it. And you have to know the, the, the URL, the internet address of Cybers Austria. That's de.cybers.deograz.at and you arrive at the landing page where you can see a little bit of a welcome to the discovery environment uh, there is a survey running you can uh, take part there and you have some uh, first tutorial videos displayed here where you can start and and have some information about cybers anyway if you want to work with it you uh, need an account so of course I already have one. So I can log in with my with my username and the password. Hopefully. Yeah, that's it. And this is my um, home area. Again, the survey. But here you see also some uh, information about your resources. We have some uh, a display about the data storage used, about the CP, CPU consumption, and also about the analysis states. So how many analyses are completed, how many are canceled, failed, submitted, and running. So running is no analysis now. We will start to analyze uh, later on. Then we have recent analysis running, 
displayed and also an instant uh, um, instant image which was launched and also some information again for different apps used uh, in in the past and again at last we have our tutorial videos displayed here starting with an uh, analysis would mean uh, having some data you can produce data directly in, in cybers by running some models or, or some simulations or whatever you have. I did the simulations a few years ago in my research area of thermal energy, and I prepared some data for you just to show you how you can evaluate data and analyze data with cybers. So what you see here is two folders. The first one is called projects and the second one is called analysis. So what we have here in the projects, three different folders with data in here. And we are concentrating on the third one here on the system simulation 0.1. Here we have six different folders where results of thermal system simulations are inside. I just show you there are a lot of data files here. And we are concentrating on water production yearly water production and what uh, uh, yearly water production this is this one and the monthly water production would be this one so just for explaining the, the data set a little bit so <coughs> I don't want to explain you about all the what is going on in the simulation and what this is it's actually a project running on on the institute where i worked former um, I will concentrate on the features of, of Cybers, okay? So the first thing is uh, we, have a, we have a project folder and in this project folder we have um, data. And how can you upload this data to Cybers? The first thing is you can use this button here with upload. You click on it, the right side, and then you have different possibilities that I use now that First one, browse local. If you browse local, you can uh, uh, a window opens where you can browse your data on your local machine, and here you can select some uh, some files. For example, also more of one. Then you can say, okay, that's it, and with the open button, it will be uploaded on the platform. So you can see here. I uploaded four different files here. Actually, if you are clicking on the three dots on the right side here, you have also some options of what you can do with the files, for example, sharing or metadata. Um, and you also can move it to the trash. So that's what I'm doing here because I don't like this, um, this files here. This was only just to show you that this was uh, working in this in this way. So there's one left. That's one way how to how you can upload your data. The second one is you can use uh, a so-called data transfer tool and Cybers US um, Cybers US. Cybers OS is using CyberDuck, so you can download CyberDuck here and can use it for uh, uploading, for example, a lot of files or also file folders because file folders are not working with this button here. And if you use CyberDuck, you can find a lot of information uh, on Cybers US about that, about how you have to download it, how you have to configure it, and how you can use it. This is the way I'm uh, uploading data because I have a lot of data files. I, it's not, not really uh, practicable to upload several files. It would be a lot of work to do. Okay, once you have uploaded your files, you can work with it. 
uh, the last uh, thing you also can use, of course, the command line, uh, the terminal with I commands to upload your files, but this is what I don't want to show you here. Um, this would be a, a quite sophisticated and, and a very practical way also to upload a lot of data files. So if you have uploaded your data files, you may be interested in uh, giving your data uh, some descriptions and you can use the metadata option in Cybers here. I just give you a small example for that. We have here our uh, simulation data folder. I click on the three dots on the right side. Again, I have the menu here and the second entry is metadata. And if I click on that, just kill this one, just to give you a, an empty page. If you click on that and it's uh, a new folder, then you get this empty page. And then you can add some metadata with this button on the right side. You get an empty line as entry. And if you click on the pencil here on the right side, you can enter a value. The scheme is a we you so attribute value and unit we give the first attribute for example project name and the value is system simulation zero one again you can add a next metadata entry with clicking on the button and you give it the name for example, acronym, and we say syssim01. Then you can get, for example, another information. Uh, this is a project, maybe it's funded. So we want to know the funder name for this project. This is, for example, FFG. This is a funding agency in, in Austria well-known and you also can add for example the project owner project owner and this is maybe professor uh, xyz then you have to save your metadata with the blue button on the right top here and this metadata is saved. The system gives you the information that the metadata is saved. And if you go back to your data, you have now this folder with metadata. And I also ent uh, entered metadata for the others. And it look, looks like this. If you go to the, again to this dialog here, metadata, then you get the metadata here. Actually, you can also use um, bulk metadata for uh, more than one folders or also for more than one data. This is under more actions and under um, under metadata. And you also can use uh, several uh, templates which are predefined for you, for example, uh, data site uh, and uh, others, uh, other metadata standards to use, but uh, uh, I stick only to the small examples here. Okay, again, this is uh, metadata. We have an upload and now we will try to share our data. And I want to share the data with Claire. Uh, she's sitting beside me uh, and I want to show her my data. What you are seeing here uh, as I as it is occurred, you always give get some messages from the system what you are doing. So if you click on that, then you see <clears throat> that I uh, moved some files to the trash. These are the four files I moved to the trash. The system uh, state this here. And you can also read uh, a lot of other things, what I did in the past few weeks or months. And I can mark all the messages 
that I read all the messages and then the red number here is disappearing. <coughs> Again, uh, back to the search, uh, to the share uh, option. I want to share my data from the system simulation here with Clear. If I want to do that, I again click on the three dots on the right side, and I have here the share option. A dialog appears. I'm just removing it again because I want to do it again for you. So in this sharing uh, dialog, you can search for usernames or emails or group names. And I want to share it with Claire. Of course, I know her username. This is this one. And here you can give rights for read, write, or for own. I will give her only the rights for reading because these are my data and I don't want her to change anything there. So that's for reading the data. And now uh, Claire can access this data. She will show you that later on. So that's about the data. And now we are coming to how can we evaluate our uh, data and analyze our data and make some evaluation. First thing here is the next button on the right side. So we had the data already. Now we are coming to our feature apps or to our apps here uh, on our service Austria. And these are the images um, Claire already explained to you. So I will show you all apps here. So as Claire already saw, said, um, we have only a few available now, but we try to increase this number. And uh, you can start all these images for uh, your analysis. We will stick now for our uh, Jupyter Lab uh, image, and we want to start this Jupyter Lab image. So we we want to have a container. In this container, we want to do our analysis. Clicking on the link, a dialog is starting with where you can set your parameters. What I want to have is a new name for the doc, uh, for the Docker container. So I want to uh, have the name of my project in here. This is system uh, sys, sys, um, simulation zero one, and the output folder is the analysis output uh, the analysis folder. This is the second folder in my in my uh, in my directory. Then I click on next, and next will be parameters. And here I have to state the input folder. So the input folder is the folder where my data is stored. This is this one, system simulation 0 0.1. I select the current folder here up on the right side with the button. And the folder name is written in this line. OK, that's all in the parameters here. Actually, with other apps, there are more parameters sometimes because uh, this, uh, this container is interactive. And that's why I don't need any more parameters, only the input folder. Clicking on next, then you can choose uh, resources which you want to, to use. So the um, minimum uh, CPU cores, minimum disk space, also the number of CPUs you want to use. I stick to the default values uh, just to speed up and uh, that will come to an end. So that's the overview of our uh, parameters. And now we want to start the container. That's launch analysis here on the right side on the bottom. And then it takes a few seconds, maybe depending on the app, uh, also uh, a little bit longer. But now the container is started. And what we have here is the button on the top for go to analyze, uh, analysis. And this will now display our uh, interactive 
um, Jupyter Lab in within the browser. So we click on this, a new tab is opening, and now Jupyter Lab appears. Okay, that's dark mode. Sorry, switch to light mode. And this is now our uh, environment where we can do our analysis. What you see here is you have the possibility to open a Python, a Julia, or a R notebook. And on the uh, left side, uh, the usual display of Jupyter, uh, the, the directories of your data. So with data, the input folder, and in the input folder, we have our simulation data of our system simulation here. Okay, that's it. And what we are just doing now, so without installing anything, we are just working in the browser. There's no Jupyter or no Python uh, necessary on a, your local machine. It's just on, on, on servers running on the server. We click on Python 3 on the notebook Python and a new notebook is opened. So that's an untitled one. And actually, I already prepared a small script for the evaluation because this would be a little bit too long to write it here. And I want to copy it just inside here. And now I hope it works, <laughs> hopefully. Um, some adjustments. Okay, so that's it. And what we have now is the possibility to evaluate these three data sets with three different parameters. So actually for the thermal engineers uh, in our uh, group, I'm calculating a thermal, um, a solar thermal uh, system, and I'm increasing the area of the collectors, actually the number of the collectors, three collectors, six collectors, and nine collectors. And now I want to see how much water can be productive with this uh, system, just without explaining any details. Now, we hit the run button, and now we cross the fingers, Waiting a few seconds. Okay. It's not displaying the figure. That's a second one. Yes, and here we have the result. So what we have is water production here in, in the year. This is the hour of the year, and you see that the water is increasing with three collectors not that high as with nine collectors. And here you can see the uh, monthly amount of water produced with the different parameters. So actually we have also, we have also three other directories here. This three here and here the Parameter changing is the set point temperature of the system. The set point temperature without any details uh, will be 90 degrees, 80 degrees, and 100 degrees. And this is now something I want to ask Claire to overtake this to evaluate these three sets of data. And for this, I want to share my container with her so that she only has to start the container and then she can do the evaluation without doing anything else, just only starting the container. So I go back to the discovery environment, switch to my analysis. And here, of course, there are some, some other analysis also running, but the last one is always the top one. So this simulation container is exactly this one I started a few minutes ago. Okay, so I'm choosing this one in the first line. And I go to the share button here on the right side on the top and say, okay, 
I again want to share it with with Claire. I give her again only read access. No, she has to change also the the source code a little bit, so she needs write access. Done. And now I stop the container. I don't need it anymore. I ask now Claire to evaluate the data with my container, just the other three um, parameter variations. Claire, are you ready? Yes? Okay. Fine. So then I switch to Claire. Claire, take over. So now you can you can have a look on my screen. I already got the note. First, uh, first one was ten minutes ago when Hermann shared the folder with me, and afterwards, uh, now a minute ago, he shared uh, analysis with me. Uh, this I can also find uh, via the, the data layer and the analysis data layer. Data layer, I can see what is shared with me. It's in this case uh, the billing simulation, system simulation. You already shared everything. And in case of analysis, uh, uh, these are mine and shared with me. One was last time, and this one is the newer one. I can just click on go to analysis i don't have to, to do anything else this will uh directly start device so the visual interactive uh, computing environment and here i already see the script of herman now it's i can see his his data included he wanted me to test the other uh three three folders data sets um i have to change this right here no it's not 25 uh rests in the name we have a t set and we have the numbers uh 180 90. so if i've not in introduced the typo I can run the script now. You can have shortly a look on the last data. Let's see what it looks like right now. Of course, it takes a little bit of time. There's, there's lots of data to be included, but now you can see there's a completely different uh, uh, representation. Um, all these three data sets behave uh, similarly. Um, for that, yeah, Hermann could give you <laughs> some details if you want. If do you want to? The the main uh, answer here is that uh, the area of the solar collector really influences the, the water production, but the set point temperature doesn't. That's all. So without explaining you a lot of details of the simulation, but you can see here that the set point temperature is not influencing the the result uh, a lot. So if you want to improve the amount of water production, then you have to increase the solar collector field and not increasing the uh, set point temperature. That's the answer of this analysis. So actually these, these Jupyter notebooks are, are quite e as, um, hand, handy for sharing, for sharing scripts. So I don't need to know how this, this code works actually. Uh, Hermann told me before that I just have to, to change the name in here for the data to be loaded. And that's it. So this makes collaboration quite easy. Uh, since we still have a couple of minutes left, I can show you um, additional things uh, Hermann left out. Um, I will close the environment. And um, first of all, I wanted to mention our MOOC uh, 
this is um, an online webinar, of course, uh, free free to register uh, for introduction of using cybers. This has started uh, this month, so yesterday actually. Uh, over 30 people are already included in this course, but you can start whenever you want. It just it does not have to be right away. And you will get uh, we, you will get an introduction and um, um, practices with uh, questions later on how to use the discovery environment and the data management platform. So what can I show you from my part? Um, let's go back to the data layer. I also have a folder of projects. Um, I just wanted to show you. I also included uh, several um, metadata. And uh, in this case, do we have metadata here? Uh, let's check it. Uh, no, I do not. Um, what? Um, what uh, Hermann just mentioned, but did not show. Uh, I will try it here. Uh, um, the moment. More actions, and I want to use a template now. In um, my case, um, I'm I'm doing um, research in op open cancer data, and uh, this is. Uh, involves human samples. So maybe uh, I will take the NCBI biosample template. Let's, let's just check it out, how it works. Uh, in this case, it's a data set uh, involving several patients. Uh, so this is not available since I added already the age. The provider uh, are several, several um, Institutions which uploaded their material to see by portal. Uh, this is a mixed set organism. Obviously, it's human. Um, it's um, clinical and uh, let's say genomical data uh, on cancer actually regarding glioma. This is also mixed, so pulled. As you can see, sometimes you've dropped down a uh, field, sometimes you just have to, to enter. And there are uh, uh, brain tissue, there are several other options you could include if it's, if it makes sense in your case. So, uh, for example, I could uh, include the uh, cancer here if I haven't included already above. That doesn't matter. This is just a test. And there is other other fields you can. You don't have to. And now I apply the the template on on this file. Uh, I will save it, and I can also copy it to to other files. I will move to this uh, project. I will copy it also to the other and folder since those have not included any met metadata yet. So nice, I've done this. Now you can see here I've included it. Now here I have the same. Um, what? Uh, when I'm in my data folder, I can also uh, ba -ba, search search for. Okay, did you already show it, Herman? You, you left it out. Okay. Anyway, um, in this case, um, um, I have no file called cancer. But all oh right, I have an analysis called cancer clustering. I could I could uh, go there. Uh, I will do so. But uh, when you search for it, uh, you can also use an advanced uh, data search, um, also including I think elastic search for uh, metadata. Um, um, yeah, metadata search. Anyway, I wanted to show uh, this file now. This is an analysis done with open cancer data. I can just go to the analysis 
since I've already started the container before, so 16 hours ago, and uh, I've included uh, my my uh, notebook. Uh, where is it? Uh, I've already included my notebook here. I can just load it. In this case, it's a little bit uh, um, more complex. Uh, anyway, I will integrate uh, several data from from the folder here, and uh, let's see what it does. It has um, this is just a shape data, uh, eighty two and uh, two hundred sixty three rows and columns in there. Um, let's have a look on it. Well, it includes data on on glioblastoma, this GVM, the deprivation. Several uh, patients uh, have been living already deceased when taking the biopsies and, uh, and uh, analyzing the material. And I've also data on the, the DH and on the histologic grade. But anyway, I wanted uh, to include other data, not only from glioblastoma, there are several glioma. And for that, uh, I will include also data Hermann made available for me. Let's include them here. I can switch the folder. Whoop. Well, you should not in, in introduce a typo. This is this is another folder which has been shared by him. And I will run the script again. Well, now I have uh, three three different data sets uh, concatenated to to more than fifteen hundred uh, samples. The number of columns obviously did not change. And uh, let's continue the analysis. What it looks like now, I've included several glioma now, not just only glioblastoma, but also. Astrocytoma, astrocytoma and other diffuse low grade gliomas. Obviously, uh, also most of the patients have already died, but yeah, that's the case if you take biopsies from the brain. And uh, I've included, uh, uh, I've added um, um, several samples from different age and um, grades. And this is one example, as you can see, uh, since there are mixed data sets, uh, this, the, the naming is very different. So G2 should be equal to 2 and G3 should be equal to 3. And that's why I can further continue with this script to do, to refine the data and to scale it for uh, further analysis, uh, maybe on, on clusters. So in this case, uh, I scaled the data and I did the principal component analysis, arriving at um, two groups. So quite well, quite significant. That's um, a median significance. And uh, when computing uh, clusters, let's say, see what it works now. Oh, it's too too complex. We will wait a little bit. Uh, we can have a have a look. So uh, the Oncotrico defines the 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 type of glioma. Uh, age is significant for the first principal component, while the grade is significant for the second principal component. And uh, well, I can I can uh, I could continue with the clustering, uh, but this is I think uh, out of scope. Just for you to to see the beneficiary aspects of Jupiter. Well, I've changed a little, little bit. Let's let's uh, skip that right now. And um, I mentioned the MOOC. And actually, we could start right away with the question and answer session. So we will stop now the recording, just to give you the opportunity to also, if you want, just uh, write off. Uh...